Broadcasting live from WOUB TV in Athens. This is Newswatch. Ohio University President McDavis refused to comment on the Roger Ailes newsroom decision. Good evening, I'm Mackenzie Pyatt. Thanks for joining us. There is still controversy around the potential renaming of the WOUB newsroom, but President McDavis remained silent. The Roger E. Ailes newsroom became the subject of controversy after allegations emerged that Ailes sexually harassed women while the head of Fox News. McDavis held an open luncheon today with city council members, but he declined to comment on the decision to rename the newsroom. After the meeting, we spoke with City Council Member Jennifer, Co Jennifer Cochran and OU Vice President of Student Affairs Jason Pina. I don't see a direct connection between City Council and the newsroom um, naming situation. And as far as I know, it's not something that um, we as a body have been involved in or asked to take a position on. Well, I certainly think from a student perspective, they are impacted and are involved, right? So um, I'm looking forward to next week's student senate meeting where they are theoretically bringing forward a resolution. The potential resolution could be brought forward at next week's student senate meeting. Student senate will meet on Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. in Walter 235. All meetings are open to the general public. And Rocky Brands has a new interim CEO after current president and CEO David Sharp stepped down. The Nelsonville-based company made the announcement on their website Thursday. Chairman of the board, Mike Brooks, will hold the position until further notice. Brooks has held the position before. He was the company's CEO from 1991 to 2011. The move comes after they fired approximately 20 people last month. A change may also be coming to the first day of school. Proposed Senate Bill 346 may make students go back to school in September instead of August. If passed, the bill will affect all Ohio school districts. If the bill doesn't pass the Senate in time for the next school year, it will be introduced the following year. And now for an update on the story WUB began following last month. Authorities are dismissing a local abduction case after finding out the story was fabricated. On August 25th, a young girl reported a man tried to kidnap her as she walked home from West Elementary School. Athens police issued a statement yesterday saying the girl made up the story to get noticed. And a Millfield man pled guilty to manufacturing methamphetamine at a local park. 37-year-old Glenn Rutter was found unconscious in a vehicle at West State Street Park. Meth and an active lab were found in the car. Rudder was sentenced to a three-year prison term, a fine of $12,500, and a two-year operator's license suspension for four of the drug charges. He's been in Southeastern Ohio Regional Jail since his arrest in June. And one local business is making a comeback to bringing jobs back to the area. Athens Mold and Machine makes and repairs tire molds and celebrated their return yesterday. The company is pledging to create 60 living wage jobs. Jobs Ohio is committing $400,000 in funding, and Speaker Christy Tanner expects the company to exceed that number. And Jackson County Hazmat Team is earning a new state verification. According to the Jackson County EMA director, they are now considered a Type 2 Hazmat Team. Jackson County is the first team in Ohio Homeland Security Region 7 to become verified. They will now assist 11 counties, including Athens, Hawking, and Meigs. And Ohio University's homecoming parade is following a new route this year. The route will stay the same until it reaches President Street. The parade will then shift north on South Court Street, turn east on East Washington Street, and finish up on University Terrace. Athens Police Chief Tom Pyle approved the permit Tuesday. The parade is set for Saturday, October 8th at 10 a.m. And this Sunday marks the 15th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, and Ohio University is hosting a variety of events. The second annual Stair Challenge and Memorial Ceremony by OU's Army ROTC program starts on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Later in the day, the Interfaith Peace Walk will begin at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd and will end at the Islamic Center on Stewart Street. A prayer service will be held at 615. The walk is expected to begin at 7. From the Newswatch Weather Center and the campus of Ohio University, I'm Matt Thigpen. Right now here in Athens we have 80 degrees, dew point at 70 degrees, pretty muggy out there. Winds coming out of the west at 5 miles per hour. 
Across the region in Columbus, we have 80 degrees, 77 in Cambridge, 84 down our warmer spot in Ripley, 81 in western Ohio, Chillicothe. For tonight, our football. Football is back in action. 70 degrees tonight, humid, won't need any jacket, calm conditions, rain should stay away for most of our region, and for the most part, not as windy as we have been. Mackenzie? Thanks, Matt. FBI agents have searched a Northwest Ohio Sheriff's Office but are not disclosing what they were looking for. The Lima News reports Allen County Sheriff Sam Krish was not at his office on Thursday. FBI Special Agent Vicki Anderson says agents conducted an investigation in Allen County on Wednesday and cannot share any of the details but did say that no one was arrested. A long-term recovery program has received a $250,000 federal grant to expand its services in Beckley, Bluefield and Huntington. U.S. Representative Evan Jenkins said the Substance and Mental Health Administration is giving the grant to Recovery Point of Huntington. The grant will help develop and open small-scale recovery residences in the three locations. And Cuyahoga County is reporting a record number of drug overdoses last month. 52 people overdosed in August from heroin, fentanyl, carfentanyl, or some combination of the drugs. 14 deaths have already been reported in September. 10 just during Labor Day weekend. A coroner in Cincinnati says drug dealers are using Southwest Ohio as a test tube for selling carfentanil after eight recent overdoses in Hamilton County. A plan stopping Ohio's publicly funded preschools from getting overlapping payments for services will be delayed until next school year. Lawmakers raised concerns that the change would cut services from four children. The change was aimed at stopping overlapping payments from the state and the federal Head Start program. It was expected to save $12 million annually. And thousands of people are flocking to Garrettsville, Ohio for a Bowling Alley's weekly raffle in hopes of becoming a millionaire. The jackpot at Skyline Bowling has climbed to about $1.5 million because no one has won for the past year. The number of players recently has been several times the population of Garrettsville. The next drawing is on Sunday and costs $5 per ticket. And North Korea claims to have successfully tested a nuclear warhead, 1,000 that can be mounted on ballistic missiles. Hear what the U.S. government is saying. Plus, a Wisconsin mayor is facing criminal charges. Find out why he's under investigation when Newswatch returns. University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. Friday nights are all about high school football, but when the games are over and the helmets come off, it's time for some gridiron glory. I'm your host, Danny Dean, back under center. Don't miss a play this season. Join myself and the rest of our team on Friday nights at 1130 on WOUB and catch us again on Saturday mornings at 1130. We are committed to bringing you the stories of players, coaches, and communities. And of course, we can't forget about some highlights. We all know there's nothing better than Friday nights and gridiron glory. I knew that I wanted to come to Ohio University from the very first time I visited here. There's something about the campus that grabs you. It was really comforting. Very welcoming. It's one thing to write down your name and your GPA and that kind of stuff and send it in. It's another thing entirely to be here and see how great it is. The campus here is just electric. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything just looked really college-like. I looked at my mom and I said, this is it. And she said, the tour's just started. I said, no, you don't understand. This is it. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us.
The leaders of Japan and South Korea are using strong words to condemn the latest nuclear test in North Korea. North Korea claims to have successfully tested a nuclear warhead, one that could be mounted on ballistic rockets. Andrew Spencer, Spencer reports U.S. officials have not yet confirmed the test, but they're taking the matter seriously. An explosion registered as a 5.3 magnitude earthquake in North Korea. North Korea broadcast a very excited announcer on its state-run media delivering news of what is believed to be the country's fifth nuclear test and the largest one yet. Pyongyang now claims to have standardized a nuclear warhead they can mount to ballistic missiles. They are not doing these things to, quote, get attention or to uh, be provocative. This is a military testing program that, that they have. State Department spokesman John Kirby released a statement saying, in part, we are aware of seismic activity on the Korean peninsula in the vicinity of a known North Korean nuclear test site. We are monitoring and continuing to assess the situation. A sniffer jet, the U.S. Air Force's WC-135 Constant Phoenix, joins four similar jets from Japan testing for radiation. A former U.S. ambassador to South Korea says this is not a question of whether the test was done, but of what the U.S. government will do about it. And Christopher Hill says he doesn't think sanctions and Security Council resolutions alone will be enough. I think we have to sit down with countries like China and go through what could be conceivable options that would physically slow this thing down. I'm Andrew Spence. Thanks, Andrew. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry briefly spoke on the issue yesterday. We're trying still to monitor, to find out precisely what took place. I'm confident President Obama will address this, and uh, we will certainly be discussing this in the context of the United Nations, I'm sure. Back in the U.S. at the local level of politics, Green Bay Mayor Jim Schmidt is facing criminal charges for violating Wisconsin election law. A criminal complaint filed today lays out seven instances where investigators say Mayor Schmidt and his campaign committee changed records or accepted unlawful donations. Brittany Schmidt takes a closer look at the investigation. After a year and a half investigation, poring over four years of records, interviewing witnesses, and talking with the mayor and his attorney, an 18-page criminal complaint lays out seven instances of wrongdoing. Under Wisconsin election law, an individual can't donate more than $1,040 to any local campaign during an election cycle. Prosecutors say he misrepresented total donations or contributors six times and misreported the amount donated one time. But in one instance, the criminal complaint shows one donor giving Schmidt's campaign more money than allowed. During the campaign period of 2011 to 2015, the donor gave Schmidt's campaign $200 on November 3, 2011, and $1,000 on March 14, 2013. That total exceeds the $1,040 donation limit. The criminal complaint shows to fix the problem, the campaign finance report changed the name of the second contributor to Junior. But during an interview with the original donor, he said Junior does not exist. Schmidt's attorney says the mayor will plead guilty to all three misdemeanor charges and will not face any jail time. He'll also have to dissolve his campaign committee and transfer the remaining balance, more than $26,000, to the state's common school fund. Now to a story creating controversy across the country. Disability activists are trying to stop a Wisconsin teen's plan to die. Jerrica Bolin suffers from spinal muscular atrophy type 2, an incurable disease that destroys nerve cells. She is in constant pain and has decided to stop using her ventilator. Jerrica's mother supports the, the decision, but organizations are asking Child Protective Services to investigate. Jason Zimmerman reports. Jerrica Boland's story and her decision to end her life has attracted national attention. We first spoke to her in July about her disease and plans for a prom meant to celebrate her life. A countless number of people contributed to the cause. I need to do what's best for me. It was a really hard decision to make. Neither Jerrica nor her mom are speaking today about her status or a letter sent by the executive director of Disabled Parents' Rights, a Colorado-based group asking Outagamie County to intervene on Jerrica's behalf in case she's not getting the proper care. 
there needs to be some oversight and there needs to be somebody who's really looking out for Jerrica's best interest to provide a second set of eyes in, in looking at these decisions. Lucas says the issue is an important one for those who work for the rights of the disabled. Several other advocate organizations also signed off on the letter sent August 4th to Outagamie County. I'm really concerned that she's not getting appropriate medical care, that she has doctors that are devaluing her life because of disability. and. Jerrica's mother says the decision to die was something that's been discussed for several years. Since most people don't survive the incurable disease for as long as Jerrica has, no word from the county if any action is being taken because of the letter. On Wall Street today, the stock market ended in an otherwise flat week on a sharply lower note. Miami, Florida continues to guard against the Zika virus. We have the details on their latest protection methods. That story is still ahead. And a cool down, a stormy Saturday. That's all in my extended forecast. What will we look forward to? Professors really care. They care about my grades. They care about my opportunities. They care about my experiences. They want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. Ohio University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. I knew that I wanted to come to Ohio University from the very first time I visited here. There's something about the campus that grabs you. It was really comforting. Very welcoming. It's one thing to write down your name and your GPA and that kind of stuff and send it in. It's another thing entirely to be here and see how great it is. The campus here is just electric. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything just looked really college-like. I looked at my mom and I said, this is it. And she said, the tour's just started. I said, no, you don't understand. This is it. Friday nights are all about high school football, but when the games are over and the helmets come off, it's time for some gridiron glory. I'm your host, Danny Dean, back under center. Don't miss a play this season. Join myself and the rest of our team on Friday nights at 11.30 on WOUB and catch us again on Saturday mornings at 11.30. We are committed to bringing you the stories of players, coaches, and communities. And of course, we can't forget about some highlights. We all know there's nothing better than Friday nights and gridiron glory. From the campus of Ohio University, I'm Matt Thigpen. Well, man, we're gonna see fall in 13 days. Not doesn't feel out like that this past week with the temperatures in the 90s. Again, 13 days till fall. We're almost there, folks. 80 degrees right now in Athens. Winds out of the west at five miles per hour. Dew points at 70 degrees. Very muggy out there. Humidity is a little low. We're not seeing any rain out there at the moment. Scattered showers are moving throughout. The evening and then more into tomorrow. Our football forecast 70 degrees, humid, calm conditions. Again, those spotty showers will be around again, zero to five mile per hour coming from the west for all those coaches watching right now, knowing those field goal kicks. Yeah, I saw the Carolina game last night. Yep, temps overnight. We'll see Athens at 68 degrees here, 69 in New Lex, and 70 up here in Cambridge, 71 down in Ironton. Storm outlook, I wanted to point this out. We have a storm outlook, slight risk of severe storms for our area. Up goes up the, into east, western New England for tomorrow. This is Saturday, tomorrow. Main threat with our cold front will be gusty winds and, sh and heavy rain, possible flooding. I know West Virginia is still recovering from the 
flooding rain. As you see, here's that cold front moving across. This is tomorrow during the day. It should reach here, over here in southeast Ohio around 5 p.m., between 5 p.m. and midnight. As we look at our hour by hour, we'll see by 8 a.m., we'll see that 70 degrees dry time. Noon, we'll see that increase of showers and storms. By six, we'll see, or by five, we'll see 90 degrees, the storms increasing. Tonight, 68 in Athens, spotty showers. That, hu that humidity, humidity will stick around tonight, so it's not very good jogging weather, I don't think. 68 in Athens again, 71 down here in Ironton, and 72 in R Marietta for tonight. 90 tomorrow in Athens, very warm, very muggy, breezy day. 10 to 15 mile per hour winds from the south. Very, very breezy. Tomorrow's highs, pretty much all the same. 90 degrees, 80 degrees. Our extended forecast, we'll get that through that cold front. Cool down by Sunday. Monday, look at that, 82. Then we warm back up for Tuesday. And then by the end of the week, next week, it's looking pretty nice. There's that fall for you, Mackenzie. Thanks, Matt. Now down to where the weather is always sunny. Planes flew over Miami Beach Friday morning spraying pesticide to prevent the Zika virus. This is the first of four scheduled sprayings of the pesticide Nolid. The pesticide is approved by the EPA, but some are concerned about the effects on health and the environment. According to CDC, Florida has seen 596 travel-related cases of Zika. I'm Tony Heim. Coming up in sports, we have a preview of the Bobcats' trip to Kansas and a look at Ohio Volleyball's experience at the Nike Invitational. But it's Friday night, so that means Gridiron Glory will be out in full force. They'll be looking to see if Jackson can bounce back and if Logan can get their first win of the season. Stay tuned to WOUB. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on your public television station. Friday nights are all about high school football, but when the games are over and the helmets come off, it's time for some gridiron glory. I'm your host, Danny Dean, back under center. Don't miss a play this season. Join myself and the rest of our team on Friday nights at 11.30 on WOUB and catch us again on Saturday mornings at 11.30. We are committed to bringing you the stories of players, coaches, and communities. And of course, we can't forget about some highlights. We all know there's nothing better than Friday nights and gridiron glory. Ohio University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. I knew that I wanted to come to Ohio University from the very first time I visited here. There's something about the campus that grabs you. It was really comforting. Very welcoming. It's one thing to write down your name and your GPA and that kind of stuff and send it in. It's another thing entirely to be here and see how great it is. The campus here is just electric. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything just looked really college-like. I looked at my mom and I said, this is it. And she said, the tour's just started. I said, no, you don't understand. This is it. Welcome back to Newswatch. I'm Tony Heim with WOUB Sports. In a little over 30 minutes, week three of high school football will kick off and Gridiron Glory has you covered. You'll find red polos at Meg's, Jackson, Fort Fry, Maysville, and Wahama. Logan's heading to Pomeroy to face the Meg's Marauders, where they will try to avoid their third loss of the season. The Chieftains finished 8-2 last season. The Jackson Ironmen are out for blood against West Jefferson after a shocking loss to Chillicothe last Friday. Waterford will try to continue their early season dominance against Fort Fry. 
Tune in to WUB at 1130 tonight for Gridiron Glory's recap of week three. Now moving away from the high school ranks, the Ohio Bobcats are hoping to get, forget about their surprising loss to Texas State last weekend when they traveled to Kansas for a matchup against the Jayhawks. Don't be surprised if the Bobcats leave Big 12 territory with a victory as the Jayhawks went 0-12 last season. Kansas defeated the Rhode Island Rams 55-6 in their first game of the season to secure David Beattie his first win in his tenure as Kansas Jayhawk coach. A Bobcat win would be the second win in program history against the Jayhawks. Sadly, Frank Solich wasn't the coach in 1967, but he did lead the Bobcats past Penn State in 2012. And I can't mention high school and college without highlighting the NFL. The Carolina Panthers and Denver Broncos kicked off the season last night in a closely contested game. The Broncos gutted out a 21-20 victory after Graham Gano missed a 50-yard field goal as time expired. Both teams from Ohio kick off their season at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Hugh Jackson-led Cleveland Browns travel to Philadelphia to take on rookie QB Carson Wentz and the Eagles. The Cincinnati Bengals also leave Ohio when they go to New Jersey to face the Jets and former Bengal quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now stepping away from football now, Ohio Volleyball is in Oklahoma for the Nike Invitational this weekend. They beat Lamar in straight sets earlier today and play Oklahoma at 8 p.m. later tonight. They end their time in the Midwest tomorrow when they take on the University of Texas San Antonio at 11 a.m. I mentioned earlier that the Bengals won't be in Ohio, well neither will the Reds, as they travel to Pittsburgh for a four-game series with the Pirates. Pittsburgh won the first game of the series 4-1 on Thursday behind a stellar outing and complete game from Ivan Nova. The Reds only need six wins in 23 games to avoid 100 losses on the season. The Cleveland Indians, on the other hand, are closing in on the playoffs. This weekend should help in that quest as they travel to Minnesota, or so you'd think. The Twins are 52-88 on the season, but 5-5 five five against the Indians. The Tigers are slowly gaining ground in the division, and the Indians can't afford to drop this series. I'm Tony Heim. That's it for sports. Back to you, Mackenzie. Thanks, Tony. A beachgoer stumbled on dinosaur footprints on a beach in Western Australia. Bindi Lee Porth said she was collecting seashells at a popular beach near the town of Broome when she felt an indentation in the sand clearing it away. She found a number of massive preserved footprints. A paleontologist from the University of Queensland said the 130 million year old tracks had probably been covered by sand or water for decades, but erratic tides finally revealed them. He said the tracks were probably made by a medium sized carnivore. Now back over to Matt for a final look at weather. Well, Mackenzie, 70 degrees tonight for Friday Night Lights. Humid, clear conditions, dry out there. Hour by hour tomorrow, Storm Prediction Center put out that slight risk for eastern Ohio. 70 degrees, 8 a.m., 84 at noon, 90 with scattered showers and thunderstorms starting at 5 p.m. There's that cold front coming through. 90 degrees, Saturday, there it is. There goes the cold front, just wait, whoosh, 70 degrees, 77 on Sunday, and look at that, 82 Monday, cooler weather, fall, Mackenzie. Thanks, Matt, and that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thanks for watching, I'm Mackenzie Pyatt. Stay tuned for the PBS News Hour coming up next, and remember, you can find the latest news anytime at woub.org. Have a great night. Friday nights are all about high school football, but when the games are over and the helmets come off, it's time for some gridiron glory. I'm your host, Danny Dean, back under center. Don't miss the play this season. Join myself and the rest of our team on Friday nights at 1130 on WOUB 
and catch us again on Saturday mornings at 11.30. We are committed to bringing you the stories of players, coaches, and communities. And of course, we can't forget about some highlights. We all know there's nothing better than Friday nights and gridiron glory.